The dungeon comes across to me as exploitation, but in the Tarantino sense. Not everybody can be Quentin Tarantino. When someone thinks of indie comics, there's usually two schools of thought. There's the guy who's kind of got the pamphlet that did it at Kinko's, and then there's the, the books from, you know, uh, larger companies like Image or Dark Horse. Most independent books, it's something that you do as you have the time. And in Sean's case, he's made it his life. Come on in. You know how you meet that guy that you automatically dislike? You should, but if you got, but if once you get to know him, you're like, how did I not like him? He's awesome. He seems just like a nice guy, a little bit goofy. Most of my exposure to Sean Hardin has been his epic, epic rants. Yeah, Sean's got a very quick wit. And not only did I like his comic, but I liked him. I thought that he was smart, and I thought that he was funny. Super funny. He's still, he's an amazing artist. Uh, if you look at any of Sean's work that's not the Dungeon comic, it's, I mean, his commissions are gorgeous. I'm a big fan. There are a lot of indie creators out there, but there aren't many who have gone out and tried to do what Sean has done it's because this is a huge, huge undertaking. If you ever thought about creating a book that is 450 pages, that's almost like 25 regular comic books. It's an adult rated version of Lord of the Rings with a love story tied into it. It's smart and it's funny and it's entertaining. You know, it is its own sort of breed of fantasy. It's a mixture of genres. It's something that shouldn't work at all, but it does. When you first pick it up, it, it, you have some certain expectations about it, and then it ends up going in a very different direction. And when I read through it and saw a lot of aspects about emotion and love, it surprised me. Sometimes the story kind of defies its expectations, and it's like laugh out loud funny. You know, it's kind of like when you're watching Thunder Barbarian cartoon. It's post-apocalyptic. Most people write or pencil or ink or color. He's essentially doing four jobs with a book that's almost four times the size that it would normally be. Uh, it's Herculean. It's a Herculean effort. It was kind of a neat book in the sense that it had several different character archetypes that different readers could gravitate toward. The best character in the book is the Brahma Bull. Brahma Bull. The Brahma Bull. Brahma Bull. You have put the pants on, he probably smacked everybody in the book. This giant, hulking behemoth. Very kind of tortured and angry character. But yet, you know, he's still a hero. He's obviously brave, he's obviously, he's, there's lots of stuff to admire there. Lacey's actually my favorite character. She is a crazy, hilarious character. I like quirky, I like funny. Um, these two characters are kind of picking on each other. Fire who kicks ass, kicks serious ass. Badass. Badass. She's strong. Sassy. Beautiful. She's sexy embodiment of anger. Um, can I talk about Ilsa now? The design is very, very different. She's completely evil. And she kicks ass and she's fine. And Bad accent craziness. He had to get all that character in there. He wasn't afraid to just do the work. He's ran into instances where, you know, lawyers have called threatening to sue. I think Sean's book is very graphic. Is it porn? No. If, if it was misogynist, it would be all skewed to the male character. But the writing is sound, too. It's a quick, intelligent read. And I like that. He's the George Romero of comic books. They just, they just don't know of him yet. That's what that is. They just don't know of him yet.